So let's work on the example where we are finding area enclosed by curves, but some or all of them are given in the parametric form. For the parametric form, formula for the area below the graph or between the graphs looks like this. It's the integral from alpha to beta g of t times derivative of f of t dt. This is coming from the uh, formula that area is integral from a to b y dx so y is g of t and then derivative of x based on the chain rule will be f prime of t times dt so that's how this piece showed up and t is defined from alpha to beta uh, sometimes you may see that the integral might go from beta to alpha if the point f and g is, is the leftmost end point in this example, we are asked to find the area bounded by two curves. One curve, let's call it curve number one, is given in the parametric form x equals t minus 1 over t and y equals t plus 1 over t. And then the curve number two is given as y equals 26 over 5. There's no t here, as you can see, but actually you can imagine that this is t to the zero, but we're still missing x. So we need to figure out the parameterization for the curve number two. To be honest, parameterization, as maybe you already guessed, is not unique. You can figure out different x and different y using the parameter t, and it might represent exactly the same curve. y equals 26 over 5 is a horizontal line, as you understand. So the smart idea will be to keep 26 over y or over 5 the same for y, and x can be t, for example, if you want. That works fine too. But it would be smart to match the x which we already have for the other curve because then we don't have to be bothered with different the x cases and it's just convenient so let's choose t minus 1 over t and this works so you can actually check yourself that it works if you uh, check for different t's and so on so this we have curve number two curve number one and if you graph curve number one over here uh, you see the graph of it and then curve number two y equals 26 over 5 that's a little bit more than 5 so it's a line and now we have the area that looks like this this is the area we're looking at so first of all let's find the x the x is in the formula over here see this the x is in the formula and that's why it was smart to choose the same x for both curves in the parametric form because now the x will be the same derivative of x is 1 plus 1 over t squared dt and that will be this part of the integral this one in blue derivative of function for x times dt perfect now to build the integral i also need to find points of intersections where do they intersect those two graphs so these are two points I need. Then let's find them. To find those points of intersections, I will use that we have y equals 26 over 5 and y equals t plus 1 over t. And solve the system y equals 26 over 5 and y equals t plus 1 over t. Those are points of intersections solve for t the equation 26 over 5 equals t plus 1 over t since t is not 0 let's multiply by t to get rid of the denominator that will be 26 over 5 t equals t squared plus 1 that's a quadratic equation t squared minus 26 over 5 t equal uh, plus 1 equals to 0 and then we can factor to find the roots 5t minus 1 or we'll just solve quadratic equation if you want that t minus 5 equals to 0 so we have two points for t t1 is 1 fifth and then t2 is 5. so remember that t is a third dimension a parameter which we don't even plot here here we're plotting x and y there's no t here t is a third parameter which we know exists and it defines our x and y's using those definitions x and y 
But uh, so we don't know which point goes first, this point or this point. So that means we need to plug different t's and see the order. Let's plug t equals one fifth into x, and then x will be one fifth minus five. For both x's, is the same, right? That is twenty uh, over minus minus twenty over five, which is minus five. So this point actually comes first. X is minus five. This point starts with t one, which is one fifth. If I plug t two, which is five, into x, that will be five minus one fifth. That is five. So this point, second point over here, corresponds to t, which is 5. You can imagine t is time. So at the starting time, 1 fifth, say seconds, we started from this point here, let's call it a. And then at the 5 seconds, now we're at the point b. That means we're moving to this direction, from left to right. And that's how I know that alpha will be 1 fifth and beta will be 5. Make sense? That's the idea. But now to build the formula for a, we have y times dx, but y also need to obey the idea of top minus to bottom order of the uh, graphs of the functions, right? So we are going to have integral from 1 fifth to 5, that's where t starts from 1 fifth and ends to 5, that's what we check out the direction over here. And then which graph graph is on the top? The blue one, the graph number two, or basically horizontal line, which is y equals 26 over 5. So y equals 26 over 5 is at the top minus then the one in green here, this graph is at the bottom and that is my y equals t plus 1 over t t plus 1 over t this is my y at the bottom close it and then dx and dx we found it it's over here in blue i think yes this is the box for dx basically differentiate any x we have the same x for both curves and don't forget general that gives you dt so derivative of x is 1 plus 1 over t squared and then by the channel dt pops out so the hardest part here is to build this integral now you can collect terms foil and finish integration integral from 1 fifth to 5 you will have 26 over 5 minus t minus 2 t minus 1 plus 26 over 5 t minus 2 minus t to the minus 3 dt now you integrate term by term, integral, no, no integral anymore, 26 over 5 will be 26 over 5 t minus t squared over 2. What is what is integral of 1 over t? That's going to be natural log absolute value of t, but since t is jumping only from 1 fifth to 5, we actually don't need absolute value because t is positive minus uh, 26 over 5t and plus 1 over 2t squared brackets a bar 1 fifth and 5 plug the top minus the bottom on uh, all coefficients here just carefully calculate them but the only thing i want to explain is those two logarithms these logarithms so I'm having, oh, actually, this should be minus natural log, yeah, minus 2 natural log of t. Everything else looks correct. So I will have minus 2, and then when I plug, so I simplified all of these, but I want to explain you how to simplify a logarithm just in case. I have ln of 5 minus ln of 1 fifth. Do you remember the properties of logarithms? The properties of logarithm tells you that this is ln of 5 to the minus 1, which is what? Minus ln 5. Because using properties of logarithms, this, let me choose another color, 
this exponent can go down, or basically can go down, you multiply by negative, and one-fifth is 5 to the minus 1. So now you end up to have 25 minus 1 over 25, then minus 2 ln 5 plus ln 5, because minus minus gives you plus. See this minus? And this minus gives you plus. And finally, I will have, you could simplify 25 minus 1 over 25, but it's fine. And I will have minus 4 natural log of 5 fifths, fives. This is the box, this is the answer, this is the area bounded by the given curves. But one curve was given a parametric form, and then another curve we created parametric form, the convenient one we wanted. And to be convenient, we matched our axis. And y was already given 26 over 5. Then we had the graph, we graphed the first curve and the second curve, figured out who was in the top, who was at the bottom. Then we found two points A and B uh, as points of intersection over here. This was the process of finding points of intersection. And then we found who comes first, because that's actually not obvious, who comes first. Even though t uh, one-fifth goes first, then five, that doesn't mean that x and y go in the same order. That's why you have to plug and check that yourself. But then indeed it was from left to right. So we plugged it into the formula of area and then integrated it. Hopefully now it's a little bit more clear. And thank you for watching. See you next time.